Good afternoon, I'm Brandon Fask. I'm a second year law student at Tulane University Law School, just down the street. Uh, and I'm Stephen Kearney. I work in grid analytics in the power industry. And we're two of the three co-founders of Fair Districts Louisiana, the state of Louisiana's first grassroots redistricting reform organization. And we just hosted our first event, an incredible success, as we hosted the Louisiana Redistricting Summit at Louisiana State University, bringing together current and former elected officials, national experts, academics, and constituents from across our state. Here are some lessons from our experience. So, you know, when people learn about us and understand what we're doing, you know, we're trying to do a district reform in, a, in essentially a one-party state where there's no real appetite for it. The question we get is, why? You know, instead of like a, cont a contested state like North Carolina or Virginia, the question is, why are you even bothering this? And our response is this. I think it's important to uh, challenge extreme gerrymandering wherever it's found, no matter the underlying political situation. Louisiana is certainly a unique state. We are a red state with a Democratic governor. We are a state that has no direct ballot initiative process, so unfortunately we can't follow many of the models that we see across the country, in Michigan, and Florida, and California. Um, so we're kind of charting our own path here, but redistricting is as much of an issue here as it is anywhere else. Despite only having six congressional districts, we have a ton of issues with gerrymandering in our state legislative races, our judicial races, our school board seats, one underknown fact is that Louisiana has more judicial elections than any state in the country. This issue has massive implications for the criminal justice system as well as the political system. But um, oh. that leads us to our, our first lesson we learned from the, from, the, um, from the event. Have a conversation. Our goal was to bring a conversation that so many people were having in their private living rooms and with friends and family and make it a public conversation. We knew the concerns people were gonna have. We knew, we thought nobody would care. We thought that um, it would be hard to find coalitions, find allies, um, and chart a path forward. We thought we were three individuals going up against a system and a state with very entrenched political traditions. But fortunately, we were proven wrong. And one of the way we did that was as a brand new organization, we wanted to establish credibility. And the, the, way, the way we did that as quickly as possible is to find other organizations that already had credibility and uh, ally with them. And so after talking with a lot of you know, well-known good, good government groups in Louisiana, as well as uh, the state's largest university, we were able to chart a, a path forward and create a strategy, find legislators who we thought would be well, um, you know, welcoming to our calls, invite them to our summit and hear what they had to say. In doing this, we also identified, we were, in working with LSU, we identified that we wanted to have a strictly nonpartisan approach. We wanted all ideas on the table. We didn't want anything to be we didn't want to be blinded by any particular uh, policy objective. And this worked. And it leads us to our final lesson. Don't let the enemy be the perfect of the good. We know in this issue, there's so many people that have ish, uh, ideas of panaceas, silver bullets, but we knew that we Citizens had- Citizens commissions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we knew in Louisiana, what we had to do was find something that would work in this state. So we decided to have a conversation and it worked out well. And so, you know, the, the lessons we've learned from the summit were this. Some, some, some paths forwards we charted for Louisiana, we found a couple legislators who would be very open to the idea of having an advisory commission. We had several legislators who were open to introducing measures to increase public transparency. And of course, I mean, you know, our summit was kind of a top-down thing in that we got all the uh, important stakeholders into a room together and talked. Going forward, we want to be a true grassroots organization and increase real public awareness in this issue because we know uh, legislators will behave differently if they know the public is actually watching. And historically in Louisiana, with, with redistricting, the public has not been watching. We are determined that they will be uh, next time around. What's been fascinating with this whole process is just seeing how many people have come out of the woodwork in this state to, de to show an incredible passion and interest in making reform happen here. Everyone came to us and was like, you guys are finally here. We've been having this conversation for years. The process in 2010 was a mess, and we need reform to happen here, and we cannot just be disregarded as a red state. This yeah. matters to us. And while we can't tell you what's gonna happen here, we can tell you one thing. We're here, our voices are being heard, and that's what really matters. And no matter what the Supreme Court does in the summer, uh, things will be different after the 2020 census in Louisiana. So. Thank you. Thank you.